morning. Welcome to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or AWS. Today we're going to perform the fourth activity for our motor, three-phase induction motor. Okay, so this is entitled uh, direct online with overload relay. So we will now connect the overload relay in our control circuit. Okay, so let's click play. Okay, normal mode. Okay, let's discuss first the operation of our thermal overload relay here. Okay, so this is quite similar to the previous activity that we had. So we have here the source lamp, okay, and then we have here the running lamp, okay, which is connected in parallel with our KM1. However, there is uh, some uh, new components here, like the THR here and the THR here. So th this one is the thermal relay, which is connected to our thermal relay here. Okay, so what happens is that Okay, this one is normally closed. This one is normally open. So let's discuss the normal operation first. If we're going to press this one, so the uh, current will be able to flow here and then activating this uh, uh, KM1 here, it will energize. Okay, if this will, will energize, this one will uh, turn a uh, closed circuit. This one will close and then it will have a, it will function as a holding contact. So the this one will close, 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 and then the motor will be running. Okay, so here comes the function of the thermal overload relay. What if there is an overload with your motor? So what will happen is it will emit a heat and then it will trigger this thermal overload relay. Okay, there is a coil here of the thermal overload relay. If this one is triggered, so what will happen is if there is an overload, this one will be triggered. Okay, and all the normally closed here will be open and all the normally open here will be closed. So what happens is when at normal operation, when our motor is running and there is an overload, this one will open. So if this one will open, okay, no matter how we press this uh, PB2, okay, no matter how we press this PB2, we cannot start our motor unless we reset our thermal overload relay and take a look at the problem on the overload of our motor, okay? So if this is open now, if this is open, okay, there is an overload in our circuit. So this one here is open, so we cannot start our motor. However, we will be able to see here. So since this one is normally open with the THR, this one will close, okay? So if this one will close, we now have this PL2, which will serve as our fault lamp, will be turned on. So it means that there is some fault in our system. So in this particular case here, the overload, okay? So if we reset our, um, our thermal overload, so this one will return to its uh, normally close, and then this, this one will return to its normally open. Now, if this is open, the PL2 now will be turned off. Okay, so that's the function of the thermal overload relay. So let's wire this system first and then let's simulate the functionality later on. Okay, so let's wire this one first, the line 2. Okay, the line 2 to the PL1, PL1, and then going back to the line 1. Okay, this is quite similar to the previous, uh, previous activities. Okay, uh, oops. Okay, and then let's connect this one to PL1. Okay, uh, we can connect it something like that and then the PL1 output. Okay, let's connect it to the fuse one and then the fuse one going back to the uh, R. Okay, and now uh, we have to connect this one here. So the PB, connect this one first. We have to connect this line first. So the PB1, the input of the PB1 to the uh, F2. Okay, the input of the, oops. The input of the PB1 to F2, and then the output, then, and then the PB2, this is quite similar to what we did for the last three activities, to the A1. However, this A2, supposedly we are going to go back that one to uh, the line one, but in this particular case here, the A2 will be connected to the 95 of the THR, the normally close. So the 95 of the THR is here, that one. So we have to connect that one. Oops, okay, we have to connect that one to the 95 the THR and then the 96 will be connected to going back to the F1 here, okay, to the fuse one. So this one should be connected to the fuse one, let's turn, okay, 
to the fixed one. Okay, and then, so we're done with this line here. Now let's connect this KM1, D13 and 14 in parallel with the PB2. Okay, so the 13, let's connect it directly. Let's try to practice the challenge mode. So 13 and then the 14, something like that. Okay, and then for the running lamp, the PL3 and connected in parallel with our A1 and A2 of the KM1. Oops. Okay, A1 and then A2. Now let's try to connect this uh, last line here. The THR, which is the 97, we can connect this one to the input of the PB1. So 97 to the input of the PB1 here. So this one is the 97, okay, and then input of the PB1, okay, and then the 98, the 98 will be connected to the PL2, the X1 of the, or the input of our PL2, which will serve as our fault lamp, okay. So this one here, 98 to the input, okay, and then the output of our PL2, we can connect. Uh, connect it directly not to the output of the PL3 but we can connect this one to 96 or output of the PL1 so 96 or output of the PL1 so I think it would be easier if we connect this one to the output of the PL1 okay and then we're done with our uh, control circuit so for the power circuit uh, just do uh, same as what we did in the previous last three lectures okay so from the breaker to the contactor breaker to the contactor breaker to the contactor and then the output of our main contacts to the thermal overload relay okay thermal overload relay and our thermal overload relay to our three phase induction motor Okay, so let's zoom out. And let's click the submit button to check. Yeah, pass. So we get the 25 wires uh, correctly. Okay, so now let's try to simulate here. So if we press this uh, PB2, this, is, uh, this will function the same as the last activity. Press this PB2, the motor will be running and then the PL3 will be turned on. If we release this one, the motor still runs and then the PL3 is turned on. If we stop this one, the motor stops and then the PL3 is turned off. Okay, so at the same time, this one is always turned on. Okay, so let's try to simulate if there is an overload in our motor here. So how are we going to do that? Let's try to press this one. So this will simulate that there is an overload in our motor. Okay, let's try to press. Okay, so assuming that there is a normal operation and then there is an overload. Okay, click. So what happens is the motor automatically stops and then the fault lamp, which is the PL2, is now turn on no matter how we press this pb2 we cannot start this motor okay so we have to reset first or inspect our uh, motor where is there an overload and then if we found the problem we can now reset our uh, our thermal overload so how do we reset this one okay you can see this button here just press this one okay if you press this one let's try to zoom out Let's try to zoom out. So if we reset this one, the PL2 or the fault lamp should already be turned off. Okay, zoom out again. Okay, zoom out. So the fault lamp is already turned off. So it means that we already rectify the problem. Okay, let's try to start it again. Start. Okay, the motor is running. Mm, then let's try to simulate the fault lamp. Trip. So stop, and then the fault lamp turns on. Okay, so no matter how we press this one, the motor will not start. Okay, so we have to click the reset. So take note of this uh, fault lamp here. It should turn off while after we click this reset here. Okay. I think we have to click it. 
zoom in have to zoom in and then click and then let's try to zoom out okay so the fault lamp is already turned off okay turn on again and then stop okay so thank you and see you in the next lecture